Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. That's not our line. That's not our line. Uh, <laughs> as the the more keen-eyed of you may may notice, uh, today you 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 only have us two <laughs> to present the live stream. You're gonna have to make do. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm Luca, and this is I'm Matheus. Um, nice to see you guys again. So yeah, today Tiago is not joining us. Uh, he is uh, enjoying some very very well earned uh, vacation time. Uh, he will join us next live stream, though. But for today, we are going to present you this amazing uh, April Fantasy Bundle. Um, could you tell us, uh, before we start, uh, a little bit about the news on the videos that are coming this month? Well, um, we talked about this one uh, previously, and it's a little late. But yeah. um, it, it is a little late because we we're doing something special with it. It's really um, cool. The video on the giant uh, tortoise, uh, which we nicknamed Fortis, yes. is coming out um, at the latest, early last, uh, early next week. But it may be even, uh, it may be even possible for it to come out during the weekend. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. Cool. But at the latest um, next um, next um, week, early next week. Mm -hmm. And we also we are also this month uh, doing a, a we're going back to the 3D printing content a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, bringing back uh, that that sort of content with uh, a comparison between resin and FDM printers, which is something that uh, it's uh, long overdue. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's something that we are really keen in exploring because we have been. Um, releasing more and more products that are thought and conceived and planned and modeled with FDM in mind. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's uh, a content that will be great for everybody. Yes, this is going to be interesting, you guys. Uh, but okay, let's move on to the Curse Collector's Curiosities. I love this menagerie, my friend. Yes, this is an interesting bundle. Uh, to start us off, actually, uh, we're going to go with our first hero, uh, Danny Lenone. Um, the concept art for Danny was done by uh, Clay Jenny Silva, actually. Uh, it's showing off right now. Uh, this is a really cool uh, mini. Uh, the idea for this bundle for the heroes was to do a little bit more uh, fighters and, and martial classes, and she is our prime fighter for today. Um, I, I, I myself uh, have a, a, a soft spot for pole arms. Yes. So I think that they always look badass. And uh, the pose on this character, I think it's, um, it, it's what sells it for me. Yeah, so, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the sculpt done by Samuel Silas. Okay, here we go. Yes, she has an, she, she just drips her personality. Like this mini is absolutely amazing. Um, I love um, the the um, kind of detailing and, and clothing and armor work that they did with this one. Okay. Yeah, it's something it's something that Loot always does. Um, uh, the guys here at Loot always do so right. Is the is like texture and cloth and stuff like that. Yes, it's always just on point. Just on point. Um, let's take a closer look at this one. Um, one moment. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this is absolutely amazing. I love the detailing on the armor here, and and kind of the the torn kind of um, the tattered cloth. Yes. Thing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Gigantic knife, by the way. <laughs> and I love the hair in this mini. It yeah. Is absolutely yeah. amazing. And I, I really like the fact that um, it's kind of like a, a, a gender neutral name. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the mini itself, um, it, I don't know, it, you might see it at first as a girl, you might see it as first as, as, a, as a guy, but it's not really clear, is it? I think, and, I, and I think that this, um, yeah. this, I don't know, this, this um, duplicitous, uh, uh, image that this this uh, mini has it's fun you it's know? fun yeah I mean every mini here uh, we kind of uh, create so that you guys can uh, input upon your own stories and kind of 
uh, allow you to explore your own creativity. Androgynous, that was the word I was yes. looking for. Yes, there we oh go. Oh my God, <laughs> it came out. Duplicitous, that's not it. Androgynous, yes. that's Androgynous. it. Okay, uh, should we move on to our next hero? For sure. Okay, our next hero is our barbarian uh, Roden Frostgrief. Uh, which is a great name to just shout while you're running into a dungeon, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think you could mistake a, a guy with this name for any other class. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so the concept for this one was done by Guilherme Neri, and it was sculpted, uh, which we're going to show off right now, by uh, Rafael Usui. So, yeah, let's take a look at that. That is amazing. I love the pose for this one as well. Yeah, he, he, he looks uh, like he's two seconds away of inflicting a lot of hurt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> True that. He just feels like he's just running into combat with this one. Just incredible. Um, before we move on to, to uh, actually showing um, his mini, let's take a look at the bust for Danny Lanon, because I just forgot that we have it here. Um, Okay, let's let's take a look at this. Oh yeah, we have the busts. Yeah, that's true. Can we? There we go. Really cool. Like I love the dynamic pose of both of the arms, kind of holding the the, the pole arm giant axe. Yeah, I think that the the casual way of holding the the the, the, the weapon, uh, again, posture the posture, it's what sells sells it for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at Roden now, who also actually has a bust, which I'm going to show off in a little bit. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he has a hatchet, a little dagger, and a great sword, so you shouldn't mess with him. Yeah. If he can't, um, if he can't swing at you um, on melee, um, he'll be able to toss some, some stuff at you, no problem. There's absolutely no running from this guy. Yeah. Like, if you do run, he's going to run after you, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at his bust as well. Yeah. I'll grab it here. And, yeah, you can see a lot more of his expression. I also love the little, um, is it a pauldron that we call it? Like the, the like skull. A, a one-sided pauldron. Yeah, yes. I think that's it. There we go. Really cool. Okay, and, and we, I, I, I get Conan vibes out of this one. Oh yeah, like the the lore that Gribble uh, wrote for him that is his our our little off-brand Conan. <laughs> he's like, he's the, the 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 cousin to Connor, you know, to Conan. C cousin <laughs> to Connor. <laughs> so, so which is the third Con barbarian? Con Conan's name? No, Conan's cousin name has to be Connor now. Connor, yes. <laughs> he is the the twice removed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay. Really cool. And for whoever said chaos stream in the beginning, they were <laughs> completely right. But that's really fun. Um, okay. Let's take a look at our third hero for today. Who is, um, and, and for you guys who already uh, are very familiar with uh, Loot's lore history, this is Simon Trinity, who is uh, Johnny Trinity's adopted protege. So, yeah. The concept art for him that you're seeing right now was done by Pedro Dutra, and he is really cool. He's kind of our monster hunter, kind of Van Helsing inspired. Um, We've done some of these in the past, yeah. and I, I, I just never get bored of them. Absolutely. They always look like, um, I don't know, they look like they're, they're, they're me they mean business, right? They do mean business. Yeah, yeah. And, and the hand crossbow thing, it's... <clears throat> It's just the perfect assassin's weapon, yeah. right? And monster hun hunter weapon is right. Such such a signature weapon. Exactly. And, and I, I think I really like it. For this bundle, this is just perfect. Uh, let's take a, a look at the, the sculpt for Simon Trinity as well. It was come, uh, sculpted by uh, Thales Augusto, and there he is. I love the little um, cover that the hat gives him. Yeah. That only lets like a little bit of the smile show show through. You don't really see his eyes, right? Exactly. It's really, really fun. That's how he escapes the Medusa's gaze. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and he is like it if Roden and, and Danny are prepared, this guy is maybe overly prepared. Like he has weapons everywhere. 
It is amazing. Let's take a, look, a closer look at his, his sculpt right now. Okay. Yeah. You got three daggers. You have enough crossbow ammunition for pretty much all the monsters in this bundle. So <laughs> that is really fun. Yeah. And um, he's, he's one of those um, who um, I think he, he performs best at a range. Yeah. But yeah, he has some daggers, right? Exactly. Like, I love the detailing on this crossbow um, also. It's, it's just a repeating like a, cross, it looks like a repeating crossbow. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And it's, it's just gnarly. It has like, a, I think, two fangs in the front, which is really amazing. And it would fit thematically if you want to play him as like a, a werewolf kind of character as well, I think. You, you just, you're just thinking Van Helsing again. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> He, he just strikes the same amount of fear as Van Helsing. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really, really great. Yeah, he looks awesome. I agree. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. Okay, let's move on to um, Dr. Anderson. Oh, Where we have his bust, though. Oh, we do have his bust. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Here we go. Yeah, closer look at Simon Trinity. Amazing. Okay. There's, there's even like some some woodworking on the crossbow, like texturing. Yes, I love that. Yeah, and I love the little button details here. Yeah, really, really cool. Okay, so let's look at the curse collector himself. Uh, this is uh, Doctor Anderson. Uh, the concept you're seeing right now was done by Beto Lima, and uh, this guy was sculpted by Andrew E. Okay, yeah, he's kind of our, um, it could be a, like a, 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 it goes from a mad scientist to the, the monster hunter with a heart of gold, kind of. Yeah, uh, yeah. on the video you guys are seeing, he doesn't have his top hat, uh, I promise you he has one, it's mm -hmm. just that it's not showing on the video, but yeah. he does has one, he we, does have one. Yeah, we're going to show it off in the bus version. Yeah. And this is our um, Curse Collector. Yes, he is the, the owner of the collection, as you can see by the many trinkets and the incredible coat he's wearing. Uh, and he is kind of dealing with the curse right now, which you're gonna, we're going to see the, the other half of the curse in a little bit. That's actually why he has a menagerie to begin with, right? Yes. Do, do, do you care to like, explain that a little bit? Absolutely. This is our uh, ex-monster hunter, um, retired monster hunter, who has been collecting creatures to kind of figure out how to deal with this curse, uh, which uh, has kind of gotten uh, the best of him uh, on his last assignment. And he's so, kind of like a, an alchemist kind of guy, like maybe a wizard. Yeah, kind of the story we have. What's, what's the stat block? Yeah. His stat block is kind of, um, um, kind of artificer mixed a little bit with uh, kind of a roguish archetype, which okay. is really fun. Okay. Um, yeah, he's kind of the the cop that got uh, that got shot in the last day of work. <laughs> kind of, that's the the archetype we're going with him. Okay. Yeah, he is kind of the the conflicting character for this bundle. Uh, let's take a look at his bus and top hat. Yeah, the top yeah. hat is removable, by the way. Yes, it is. It's kind of stuck here because we have <laughs> we have it kind of glued. Yeah. But yeah. It is removable, uh, and I love the detailing on the hair and kind of pelt on his coat here. It is amazing. Uh, he also has this clock. I don't know if, if uh, we can show it off uh, on camera exactly because of the it's light. It's like a pocket watch? Yeah, it's a pocket watch. My, gran my grandfather left me one of those. <laughs> Mine as well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is really, really cool. Um, it's, uh, by the way, uh, it is his story we follow in the story so far for this bundle. Uh, we're releasing some, uh, some magazines for the stories um, behind the bundles, so the stories for the season, mm -hmm. and it's kind of uh, his story we follow this month. Um, and should we take a look at his counterpart? Um, yes. Yeah, the other side of his um, personality, so to speak. Some would say the hide for his jackal, right? <laughs> yes, uh, it is Mr. Sprig, uh, the concept art done by Beto Lima. Um, and this one was sculpted by Douglas Machins. And he is really cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, 
every time I'm doing this with um, Jag, I always like ramble on about how the facial expressions that uh, Luke delivers is something that always blows my mind. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the examples of that for sure. Yeah, I, I loved like photographing this mini for the spoilers because he has like such a fun pose and and, and the facial expression. Yeah. You, you can really like get what he's trying to say you know what I mean yeah it, it just completely shows through the the expression he's showing off in here it's yeah. just pain and anger and he is just <laughs> going to demolish the first person that steps in front of him yeah so no yeah questions asked it is really cool let's take a closer look at the mini uh, I love the detailing of the curse in this in his arm mm -hmm. it is really really cool it kind of feels like it it's uh, something he, he kind of got in contact with and is kind of taking over his whole body, right? Yeah. And uh, the way it's uh, portrayed in this mini, it, it's fun because maybe it's something that you can do, like um, the curse is, is slowly like taking over him uh, even more so than, than, than usual. And, yeah. if, and eventually he's going to be like completely out of control or something like that because exactly. there's this like dynamic of a part being more soft than the, than the other. I think that that... That's that's pretty cool. When does he become more monster than he is a doctor? Exactly. Right? Yeah. When does the the other personality the take the paradox over? of of the, the ship, right? Exactly. <laughs> How many parts do you have to exchange to become the other? Yes, exactly. Exactly, and it's really really great. Okay, um, okay, we have talked to about um, most of the humanoid characters. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the doctor's helper. Um, this is the person who is helping him go through the curse. This is Jeeves Gollum. He is uh, our automaton for this bundle. The concept art for him was done by Pedro Dutra and it looks completely amazing. Uh, he's kind of this a little bit more um, uh, kind of finely detailed automaton than we, we have done so far. Yeah. Um, the sculpt was also done by uh, Pedro Enrique. Maybe like... Um in between his travels, he he wound he ended up in a in a dip, like a more technological uh, a plane or planet or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. And he's very like finely detailed. You can see that the, even the core of the automaton kind of feels more uh, kind of well built. Yeah. And it has an absolutely nasty and amazing arm blade here. So yeah, that could totally be a a, a uh, warforged as well. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah. Like if you want to play a warforged, this is definitely your character. Maybe a warforged uh, a blade master, like uh, duelist with like an arm blade or something. That, that would be cool. Be really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. I love the detailing on this mask. It feels very like if it really fits the character. It is. Yeah, it does. It yeah. truly does. And it kind of has like this kind of steam engine kind of even detailing. And what's happening on the, inside that orb? Is like that power, like is that a power source? Is that like arcane energy? What is that? It might be. It might be the center of like his personality. Like it might be his, his mind or or power source kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah. So yeah, you shoot the, the head of this one. It, it doesn't stop. It's not there. It's just uh, merely for shows, pretty much. So yeah, this is really fun. He has kind of this. Uh, very kind of renaissance um, detailed armor design also mm -hmm. which I really like yeah it's a little more modern modern than uh, than what we usually see like in really medieval stuff but exactly I really like it yeah it fits like if you're going for a little bit more kind of the person who is bringing forth uh, some some technological revolutions in your world this is kind of uh, this is what he would be delivering right exactly yeah, I agree yeah yeah, but it really does talk to the medieval still in some ways. Sure. Okay. Yeah. The knee, the knee, pa the 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 knee uh, guards, yes. right, are very like armory and um, yeah, it's still like medieval fantasy. That's for sure. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I love that. Okay. So, let's go to the next one. Yes. Let's take a look at um. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> this guy, the dragon this guy. for this bundle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What what's to say? Uh, first of all, I I, I just um, I just love uh, the paint job that Masi did, oh, right? Yeah. Yes. But the whole idea of, of it uh, being perched atop like a tower or something, mm -hmm. this is this this makes for such a cool scene, like it's such a cool look. 
and such a dynamic pose as well. Yeah, it's, it feels like he's he's um, kind of showing the the whole size of him by kind of contouring yeah. the the tower. This is not simply a mini. This is a display piece. Yes, absolutely. That, and yeah, I I just love this. This is uh, the Proto Dragon, by the way. Um, the concept art by him was done by Daniel Senna, and it was sculpted by Pedro Young. And good job, you guys. Like the artists here, loot. Uh, just deliver over and over for every character in the bundle. It is absolutely amazing the work that you do, guys. They make our job easier. Yes, like <laughs> talking about these awesome minis is an absolute joy. So, yes. Yeah. Don't go chago on me, please. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to break any minis, don't worry. <laughs> I have only broken one mini so far. It was a really fun break because Tiago had already broken it beforehand. <laughs> then you didn't break it. I kind of did. Nah. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. The people who watch that live stream can comment down below. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let's take a closer look at the Proto Dragon. There we go. Yes. Uh, just uh, a comment, you guys, which is um, important. It, it has uh, a very dynamic pose. And to deliver that, you kind of have uh, to assemble him... Um, as you kind of put him here, so if you're gonna paint him, be careful not to glue everything before you, you put him here. So yeah, but it is an absolutely amazing mini. Not only that, it, um, they have uh, like two options for the for the tower. Yes. It has like a tallest, taller version of the tower and a shorter version of the tower. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, just to mention that. So yeah, this part kind of, uh, it's kind of glued together, but you can uh, let it go. And it has uh, a secondary base for uh -huh. it um, that works by just, and you saw in the, the bigger model, but you can just place it over here. Uh, it has kind of the, the directions where you have to place them. And then you just, um, let me see if I can adjust this. Yeah. Hold up. The little glue inside is kind of <laughs> making me, yes. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it, it's a, 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 as you said, like it's more, uh, aimed as a display piece. Kind yeah, of. yeah. No, but but if you glue it together, it's gonna hold. But you have yeah. the you, you have the, this this little tack we use to to affix some of the stuff that we don't want to glue exactly. permanently glue. So it, it's kind of in the way there. But yeah, that's it's what you said. Yeah. yeah, it's a very good thing for painting as well as a as a little painting tip. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to paint your midis and you don't want to glue anything yet, that's a that's a good thing to use. Um, but yeah, it is incredibly detailed. The last time we were talking about this before the live stream, you were commenting on kind of the scale and the, the detailing that they, they put yeah. in this mini. Yeah, not only not only the the, the 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 texture on the on the on its hide, right? Yes. But also the way that Masia worked that on her paint job, like the, her her spinal spikes, the, the the dragon's spinal spikes have one color that matches the inside of the wings and stuff like that and the horns and stuff but then the the body's this like aqua blue turquoise thing which like is striking and Amazing. i really really loved the way that Masio actually worked that thing about the uh, about the the dorsal high you know it yeah. looks amazing are we getting a closer look at him in the 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 uh, video for the bundle yeah the, on the on the video uh, we 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 were able to to put the, the painted big one on the video so yeah it's yeah. there for for people's enjoyment take a look at that afterwards guys it yeah. is worth it's worth looking at it's amazing yeah okay so moving on uh from the the dragon in this bundle let's talk a little bit about our uh Cerberus spawn which is incredible um it uh the the concept art for the the server spawn was done by gustavo Rosetto. um um, and it was sculpted by Renato Rua. So, yes. Perfect. This is our three-headed dog from, uh, from, from Hades. From the underworld. From hell. From hell. Uh, the idea for this one is that it, it's not exactly the, the Cerberus we know and love. This is kind of how he manifests in the world. He's this kind of... Uh, like... If we're doing server servers, it would be gigantic. Yeah. Yes. But um, I, I as a dungeon master, I would never like uh, refrain myself from using seventy-five millimeter pieces uh, yeah. 
in in my games like mixed up with 32 millimeters uh, heroes and stuff because sometimes you just want a humongous three three <laughs> headed three headed dog, dog. and yes. th the 32 millimeter version is not humongous enough exactly you know so yeah I I, uh, I have absolutely no qualms with that let's actually compare like the two sizes because yeah. like if if you're going for the 32 um, it, it it will take a bite out of a character. Yeah. It's going to be... We can, we can actually... Like, oh, yeah. We have the painted it. version. Yeah. Here. There we go. Let's show it off. Yeah. yeah this is the 32 millimeter version. Painted. Uh, this was painted by Martio, right? Yeah. yeah. It is amazing. It's still... Like, it's still... It still can inflict a load of hurt. You can lose like an arm. A, to a medium character, right? Yeah. It's like the size of a... Of a um, horse, uh, kind of. Yeah. Yes. It's like a horse-sized three-headed three, three, three uh, headed dog. That's that's a lot of hurt, but compared to the other one... Like, compared to the 75... This like, is Hades Hound now. Yeah, right? this is this the is real Hades Cerberus. Is, yeah. This is Cerberus spawn, that's Cerberus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It that's... is amazing. And it kind of uh, shows a little bit of the themes for this bundle. Like, mm -hmm. one of the shackles is kind of... Uh, let loose like this. This creatures that the doctor keeps in his menagerie mm -hmm. are uh, are going loose. Yeah, um, they have been uh, released. So yeah, that's the trouble the adventurers have to deal with. And I love the detailing of the skin and bones in this one. It's very infernal. And it has like a a serpent for for its tail, which is really really cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love when we do this. Kind of the, the the skins, the skins patches thing. Yeah, yeah, the flesh with the mouth really uh, kind of shows the the impact of the kind of inferno mini that we have yeah. here, which is really really cool. Okay, it always reminds me of of um, uh, Harvey Dent's face. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it really does. But yeah, let's move on to um, our Rainbow Hawk. Here it is. Which is definitely, like when we kind of think of the bundles and we are kind of designing uh, the minis uh, to go in a bundle, we always think about the painters because you guys are a big part of our community and it, it, we love seeing you guys work with, with the things we deliver. Um, and this is definitely an, a majestic bird that you can paint. Um, last, uh, I, it, was it... Uh, yeah, last month's bundle there was a hippogriff or a no, it was a griffin. Yes, and uh, Masa's painting was kind of in the direction of a bird of paradise, mm -hmm. which I liked a lot. And this time we actually have yeah. a bird of paradise. Exactly. In order for the painters to go nuts, and I'm and I'm I'm positive we're gonna see some like great community highlights coming coming with that one. Absolutely. Uh, the the concept art was but uh, uh, for um, the Rainbow Hawk was done by Emmanuel Pelis. And it was sculpted by Danilo Chagas. Let's take a look at that sculpt, you guys. Yeah, I love to see it in the turntable because it really conveys kind of the the majesty and, and yeah. kind of the um, the framing that we have for this creature. Yeah. Yes. Majestic is. AF. <laughs> <laughs> Truly majestic <laughs> AF. Let's take a closer look at the mini now. And I love how it kind of is giving shade with his wing. It's kind yeah. of like turning his, his uh, shoulder a little bit. He's like unveiling himself. Yes. Behind his wing, right? Exactly. But don't don't. Uh... And it's funny how we default to uh, calling uh, calling it a he because in birds normally the male is like so majestic and yes. and uh, and I don't know and colorful and stuff. It's kind of a, yeah. a, a, a fantastical peacock. Kind yes, of. kind of, yeah. Yes, and, and, and like guys, don't underestimate this guy. This this has a, a mean stat block. He's a very, very interesting creature as well, if you want to put him in your table. Yeah. Yeah. And as all as always, um, the bases, um, what, what uh, our artists sometimes do with bases, I... Um, they're, they're never boring, you know? Yes, they're amazing. So, yeah. I love the dynamic pose they have uh, done for this one. It is amazing. But okay, let's move to our uh, next creature. And this is a really cool creature because it is actually um, a creature based on uh, Brazilian folklore. Uh, this is the Mapinguari. Uh, the concept art for this one was done by Laiton Souza and it was sculpted by uh, Luis Silveira. 
and let's take a look at this guy. I have one thing to say. I love me some Brazilian cryptids. I love them. <laughs> and, and guys, loot has really uh, kind of thrown in the loot spin for this guy. He, he kind of uh, talks both about Brazilian uh, uh, fauna and about Brazilian cryptids and myths. So this guy is really cool. I know that uh, in Nightmare, um, Nightmare Into the Abyss, I don't remember exactly the bundle name. You guys Nightmares were, of the Abyss. Of the Abyss, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you guys really love the the demon with a, a mouth on his um, on his belly, and this guy has kind of the same effect, if if not uh, more pronounced, because he is a really really large mini. This is another one that I would maybe use the seventy five version of it. Yeah, but that's like a that's a that's a giant. Like yes. A, Colossal, I don't know. If if you if you use the but but imagine uh, he would be able to swallow a thirty two millimeter character whole. Well, probably a his... large thirty two millimeter even. Yeah. Like this is a big guy, you guys. Yeah. He is incredible, and he has kind of the the sloth kind of detail, which is not something exactly from Brazilian myth. This is kind of some some loot spin for you guys, but it looks absolutely incredible. Uh, the giant sloth is actually a, a extinct uh, megafauna that that used to roam Brazilian Cerrado, right? So, yes. So it is actually quite similar to the to that the, creature. To that creature, yeah. Yeah, and and I love the detailing on the pelt for this creature. I love uh, the kind of spikes, probably probably venomous spikes, um, and it looks incredible. Yeah. Talking a little bit about the, the, let's say, power set for this creature, uh, it is kind of um, a, a very powerful hulking creature that um, uh, is very feared. It has a mouth uh, in its abdomen, and the, the kind of saliva he produces is kind of acid. So it's a really cool creature. And we also actually have another uh, Brazilian creature in this bundle, which is really nice. Uh, and that is actually the latest season of Invisible Cities. Is it? Machita Pereira appears uh, is a is a major like a major antagonist in the, the latest season of, of uh, is it Invisible Cities in English? I'm not, I'm not sure. Is it that's Invisible Cities? Yeah. Invisible if you guys cities? know, uh, do post it in the comments. We're yeah. gonna comment about it. It's uh, um, later it's a, a Netflix show that um, features Brazilian uh, like cryptids and stuff. And mm -hmm. It's really cool. And the latest season actually has this the Machinta Pereira in it. Yes, this is the Machinta Pereira. Uh, yeah, the concept for this one was done by Clegiane Silva and it was sculpted by Luis Silveira. And uh, this this uh, character is kind of a Brazilian harpy hag, which is really, really cool. Yeah, that's the vibe. Uh, can we take a look at the sculpt for Machinta Pereira right now? Okay, there we go. Yeah. This is kind of the, um, the hag that doesn't let you sleep as, as she cackles during the night. Yeah. She's kind of the potion maker and, and kind of a uh, uh, powerful hag of Brazilian culture. One off, right? One off, yes. yes. I love... We have, to ha we have to do the cuca eventually. We do, we do. <laughs> That's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, let's take a closer look at the sculpt right now. And guys, this one is really cool. I love the detailing for the legs. That don't have kind of talons. It's like an ape's foot, yes. kind of, right? It is very, very uh, creepy combined with the harpy's body. Uh, and, and I love the base detailing for this one. I would even use this base alone without the mini. It is so yeah. detailed and the nice. Branch is great. Yeah, the branch is great. It is really cool. Um, and I love kind of this kind of um, color of of uh, feathers that yeah. uh, this character kind has. Kind of like a vulture, right? Exactly. It is really, really cool. I love the detailing on the face as well. Like you said, like the expressions that look puts in its minis, it's absolutely amazing, you guys. I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> Truly. gonna lie. Truly. <laughs> we, uh, we work here and we are constantly surprised by the minis, just like you guys, which is really, really fun. Uh, okay, let's take a look at our next mini. Uh, this is the Splitting Demon. 
Yeah, this guy is kind of the... Straight out of sci-fi, this one. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of straight out of uh, kind of doom kind of creature. Yeah. Yeah. Or even like Guillermo del Toro's um, it does, Pale yeah. Man kind of influence. Yeah, it does, it, does have, it does have a little bit of that as well. Yeah, You're right. It, yeah. A, a lot of different influences came into this one. It's really, really cool. I sometimes enjoy this idea of, of mixing up uh, sci-fi and, and, um, and uh, fantasy, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, creatures like with um, totally different technology from another time and stuff like that clash with um, with a world that is really not prepared to, to deal with that. Exactly. I think it's um, that's a, a, a premise. That's a very interesting premise. It really is. Uh, and the Splitting Demon concept art was done by Guilherme Neri and it was sculpted by Pedro Henrique. So let's take a look at that. And this is kind of our main antagonist for this bundle. It is uh, a demon, a very intelligent demon that was caught and locked up by Dr. Anderson and is kind of seeking revenge right now. And it is absolutely terrifying yeah so it is really really cool I love the um, um, if we can take a, a closer look at it I love the splitting effect on this one kind of the the skin tearing into two different positions in this does he have a power that 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 talks about that in his stat block yeah so tell us a little bit about that yeah this is a creature uh, that can split itself into two while um, as, as they eat somebody's soul it's very very creepy very demonic <laughs> so he uses a person's soul to multiply himself exactly that's his fuel yes okay I that's, love that's the, yeah that's um that's an antagonist right there. That is an antagonist. Yeah. I love the crown effect on this one as well. It, it, it feels very uh, menacing and kind of... Um, oh, honestly, the, the best word is sharp. <laughs> but <laughs> it's really, really cool. The musculature kind of really works well with the, the splitting effect as well, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. And, and again, like you were saying, I, I honestly, if you want like a, a larger uh, demon or devil for your campaign, you can use this as like a, the, the seven, the seventy-five millimeter as like a, a, a big a bad evil guy for your towering campaign. Towering demon. Exactly. Yeah. Make him grow. It's really cool. Okay. But yes. He, he, he. He looks, um, he looks He's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. He does. Let's take a look at our next creature, uh, which is a loot original. This is the Hoka Helked. Helked. <laughs> this one actually it also reminded me of a Brazilian cryptid uh, that was in, in Invisible City uh, in the first season. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the uh, like hog. The yeah, hog the hog man creature, man creature that's, guy. What's his name again? I don't know. I know that's the hog from um, Krupire. That's that's the hog he rides no, on. No, that's not. The, that's not it. Isn't it's, it? it? No, it's not. It, that it's another. It's another cryptid altogether. Uh, I'm not gonna remember that's the name, but some, someone in chat is, is gonna is gonna eventually uh, bring it up. Brazilian folklore is really cool, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, this is kind of a mix. Like, he was like a redheaded guy with a red like red beard. I remember him. Yeah. I think he. I, I don't. I don't really know actually. I yeah, thought he was. Somebody's uh, gonna come yeah. up with it. Don't worry. So the concept art for this one was done by Emmanuel Tennis, and and the sculpt was done by Alexandro da Silva Oliveira. Let's take a look at it. And this is kind of our, um, if there is an owl bear, this is the mix between a hog, an ape, and an elk. This is kind of our <laughs> magical experiment uh, for this bundle. Kind of the, the, the mixed creature. It's like a boar, gorilla boar. A gorilla boar, yeah. <laughs> it is amazing. Borilla. A borilla. A borilla, okay. A borilla. <laughs> or or the, the name that we gave it, hogatel, if you will. Um, so yeah, it is really cool. I love, I love kind of exactly what you said, like the differing uh, creatures kind of mixing together, but to form like this really cohesive kind of. The, it really works for me, like this this concept for for this creature. Yeah, it is really really cool. Chimeric like chimeric style creatures. Um, yeah, they all they they they're always fun because they always throw you off a little bit. Yeah, but at the same time they just work because they're always creepy. They really do. Like, how how do you fight one of these? 
like you go straight on, you're you're gonna meet some some uh, interesting resistance if you try to do that. Yeah. But yeah, he's a really really cool miniature. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about our. Um, next creature uh which is also from uh another folklore uh it is the kappa um, a creature straight from from japanese folklore the concept art uh from the kappa was done by laiton souza and it was sculpted by fabian cardoso let's take a look at it and i love kind of the personality that this, they give this kappa it's kind of uh, huddling over um over a river and a rock and kind of holding a fish and just looking kind of Ang not angrily, but kind of, um, um, kind of. I have no time for you at some other creature, possibly. The face gives me the Grinch. Yes. The pose and the fish gives me Gollum. Exactly. <laughs> that is really cool. Uh, let's take a closer look at the Kappa, actually. I, I gotta say, just straight up, I love the effect they have with the, the turtle shell. It feels like it's it's connected, really, truly connected to the kappa, which is really fun. Yeah, and it has its signature uh, 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 water uh, cup on its head. And we also added kind of uh, this this other details on the the shell, which is really really cool. It kind of looks like barnacles, right? Like oversized barnacles. Exactly. Like, that attached to its uh, to its shell. Which thematically really fits with the the whole kappa mechanic. Uh, but it, it would be interesting to see it painted not as part of the shell, but as, as like a parasite, right? Yeah, that would yeah. that would be interesting. That would give like a, a an interesting um, environmental uh, um, thing for for your kappa would be really really nice. Yeah. I love that that is a carp actually. That's a, that's a, a really cool detail. Yeah, I love this mini. I actually got uh, one of these from like whenever we don't we uh, we, we actually um, as quality control uh, we test every mini and we print every mini. Yeah. And once upon a blue moon, a, a mini actually goes wrong before we uh, kind of finish the whole uh, supporting process and. Uh, Luke lets us take them home, and I actually took one of these home, and I'm really, really excited about it. <laughs> Another fun fact, uh, this is a Japanese folklore creature, mm -hmm. and uh, it is the, the name of the Mario, uh, the Mario monsters, the Koppa, yeah. actually come from those. From the Koppas. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. It is a really, really cool mini. And about the, about the previous one that we showed, the... The, the Haka uh, Bell. Yeah, Hogapelk or or Borilla. Borilla. <laughs> the name of the of the uh, Brazilian cryptid that I was trying to remember mm -hmm. is uh, Tutumaramba. Tutumaramba. I think somebody actually posted it in chat in the chat. Yeah, just then had to post it in the chat. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's take a look at actually um, one creature that is um, in two forms. This is our squidling. Uh, we have. Uh, the squidling swarm and the twinning squidling. Uh, both concept was done by Igor Mota and it was sculpted also both of them by Vito Di Paola. And this is kind of our little um, cute aberration that turns into an absolute nightmare, <laughs> which is really, really fun. <laughs> I love those. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of this... Um, do they multiply as well? Or do they, or do? they just come in, thro in troves? No, right. that is the whole concept. Uh, you meet one of this totally adorable creatures, uh -huh. and then they bite you and become a cloud of uh, squidlings that are, are going to okay. swarm you. Okay. So yeah, that that's... sounds like a, a, a great Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Try them out on your players; they're going to love it, <laughs> or hate you for it. But that's part of the uh, the course. Um, okay, let's take a, a closer look. On the on the on the um, um, on the the video, they actually already saw the, 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 two, the two possibilities, right? Yes. Yeah. So you have this, uh, which you can, uh, it's, it's a hollow, so you can actually fit a mini in it. So it kind of has this whole uh, swarming functionality to it. it kind of, you can overpower a hero, like 
Maybe with a hero, it makes more sense. Yeah, oh, yeah, you have a hero, hero in your ass. Sorry, yeah. I, I thought you were doing it. I mean, he has an anti-hero personality, but it's, <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> strike him it out of the team. It wasn't me throwing shade, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is really, really fun. This uh, is actually the, the mini that I used when I photographed it. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if you want to have like a, a little bit of a... Uh, an aberration. This is the 75 millimeter version. Yes, it's, exactly. This, this is important to point out because yes. it's supposed to be a tiny miniature. It is a tiny creature. Yeah. Uh, the 32 millimeter version is kind of the size of any of these that are in the swarm. Uh, so yes, it is really really cool, and I love the detailing. Kind of uh, fits with the whole aberration eye theme. Yeah. Like if you want to do like a companion to um, like. The minis we did in the the uh, Eye of the Watcher bundle, uh, you can actually use this one. It would fit really well. Uh, Lucas uh, has just brought us yeah, this the is thirty-two the tuner. Put it uh, alongside a hero. Yeah. Alongside a hero, yeah. It is um, tiny compared to a hero. Yeah. And it can be can become a cloud of these. So that's really really fun. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's uh, move on to actually our last monster in this bundle. This is the Assimilizard. Uh, the Assimilizard's concept art was done by Gustavo Roseto and it was sculpted by Leandro Pavanelli, who is um, the... Um, actually... Yeah, no, yes, okay. Um, so the Assimilizard actually um, kind of... Uh, talks a little bit about the whole concept of the, the creatures in this bundle. Uh, it's kind of the, the, the power set that the doctor is looking for to actually cure this, this curse. Well, so the, the assimil lizard is the key? Not really. But not really. All of them can be the key. Oh, um, okay. You might know, uh, actually uh, discover a little bit more about the key and the doctor's research on the story so far mm -hmm. um, um, story that we're, we're putting out. But yeah. This is a creature that can actually uh, assimilate any um, um, abilities that other creatures may have. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's take a closer look at this one. I love this one. If you're a bad person and you get killed by that, is that a karma chameleon? A karma chameleon. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, yeah. I'm just old. <laughs> 80s music. I, I'm probably like a couple of people understood what I'm trying yes. to say. <laughs> <laughs> Please be vocal in chat, guys, who understood this. But yes, possibly, yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's really, really cool. I love um, kind of the dynamic pose that it has, kind of going uh, around this, this uh, branch. It's kind of folding on itself, which is really, really cool. And it has this very um, um, thin kind of limbs, like yeah. contrast. Really with the body. slender, right? Yes, yeah, this very yeah. slender creature. Yeah, it, it's it, it, strength. It's it's not its uh, strength. It's not its main stat, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> strength. It's not its strength. Not its strength. Yeah. That's that's dumb sad for this character. <laughs> yeah, but this this tongue gives me the creeps, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an ex extra arm. <laughs> exactly. But like it has little tiny small teeth. I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, uh, in the overhead camera, but yeah, it is. It's like an elephant's trunk if it was like conceived by, yeah, I don't know, a it, disturbed person. If it was also its mouth. <laughs> like, and I love that it does not have any teeth. It's just, it, it really is. Its tongue has all the, it, the teeth it needs. Exactly. Yeah. So really, really cool. I love it. So, okay. Uh, these are all the creatures we have uh, in this bundle for you guys. So, but we have uh, some uh, something new, this yes. bundle that we haven't actually talked about. It's just like laying there and we haven't ac actually acknowledged it in any way, shape, well, or form. Should we talk about it right now or should we talk about the objects and make the people wait a little bit more? Uh, I guess, I guess when you say it like that. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's, we'll, we'll move through the, the objects really quickly and then we, we're gonna, guys, don't worry. We're gonna let you have a closer look in the, at, at the environments, which is really, really, really fun. Uh, so first of all, we have the botanic displays, which 
really, um, um, are really actually useful um, objects, if, if I can so, say so myself. Uh, the concept art by, uh, for all of them was done by Katatao. Uh, the first display uh, was sculpted by Josiao de Souza Alves. The second and third was by João Vitor. And the fourth was by Ola uh, Olavio Dali França. So, yeah, uh, let's take a closer look at them. Can you get them there? Yeah. We have um, a little huddle of objects there, guys. Yeah, is this one, yes. is this one of them? That's yes. one of them. This is another one of them? That's the job one, but it I'll keep it close. Okay, is this it? Okay, that's you, another You have to help me out here. And you have the, the carnivorous plant, right? Oh yeah, no. there's, a, there's a skull, the carnivorous plant. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the botanic displays. So, really great. Like you have this this um, oversized, um, maybe ancient plants that are being depicted here, which is really cool. If you have like a herbologist or a scientist, uh, if, if you may, um, that studies plants in your campaign, this is really, really cool objects to put in a, in a battle map. You can really interact with them in a, in a fun way. This yeah. might shoot spores, this might bite your character, so it's really evocative and you can really, uh, really use them to great effect in your table. So let's uh, take a look also at the containment cages. Ooh, okay. Yeah, these are the big objects for this bundle. Uh, they are really, really cool. And they come in different sizes. Uh, the, the concept art for them was done by Desu uh, Junior, and they were sculpted by Roberto Paula. And they are kind of um, sized for different creatures. So you, uh, let's take a closer look. Uh, we have the small one that might fit your um, medium 32 millimeter and kind of trap them there, which is really, really cool. Uh, really detailed also. I love uh, that it kind of has uh, all over kind of different details and it has a functional uh, chain right here, which is really cool. You can kind of hang it, which can be really nice. Um, you have the slightly bigger version. Let me try to get this on camera, which is uh, perfect for your uh, large uh, 32 millimeters. There we go. Uh, I think this one even fits the, the 75 like bird. Doesn't it? No, the 75 bird? I don't think so. No. No? No. No, I'm crazy. That's a hat for that bird. Yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then you have the large cage, which can actually attach some chains here uh, that work for the, um, the kind of huge uh, uh, creatures. Large creatures, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, this might fit some 75, but I'm not sure which. But yeah. Uh, this are the containment cages. We also have the menagerie gate and the menagerie fence, uh, which are really great. They're um, here. They're there. And we have a whole bunch of this, you guys. You can print them out. You can uh, use them. They are very modular, uh, which is really fun. Uh, the menagerie gate was done by Desu Jr. and sculpted by uh, Anderson Fernandes, and so was the menagerie gate. So again, uh, concept art by Desu Jr. and sculpted by Anderson Fernandes. So, yeah, they're really cool. Uh, let's take a look at them. And they work uh, like so. They have this kind of uh, uh, piece that can attach to the gate uh, and attach uh, to the, um, the fence. Yeah. So it's nice gonna... to point out that the, the gate has like working hinges. Exactly, it does. And then you, you have a bunch of these uh, yeah. little ones that you can actually go attaching and make it modular and make a gate uh, as big as you want. Yeah. So really fun pieces for your um, your campaign. Okay. They are made to fit in the urama. Oh, oh yeah, they're made to 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 go like around the urama. Yeah. So so it kind of um, gives off this like vivarium like menagerie vibe. Exactly. So yeah. Kind of goes uh, around them, which is really really fun. There are two sizes of this fence. Uh, there are two sizes. Oh yeah, of these fences. We Great. have the smaller um, the smaller fence, you have. and then we have the bigger one. Oh okay. For um, whatever you want to fit in there. So yeah, that's really fun. I love the design in these. Really really useful. Um, and I'm sure they're very excited about the fan. The, yeah, the fence. But <laughs> we still have just a couple more objects really quickly. Oh, we have, we have more. I'm sorry. Yeah, the jawbone and, and 
the uh, skull display. But yeah, let's just quickly take a look at them, which is really, really cool. Uh, very useful as well. But okay, let's move. Let's move to the interesting stuff, guys. <laughs> no, everything's interesting. The, the, Come yeah, on. But, but the, this is new. The big ones. Yeah. Yes. So, guys, we have been um, uh, working on something new this yeah. past uh, couple of months, and this is the result. Yeah. This uh, is actually a, a, like a, a ready to make diorama uh, a base. Like, mm -hmm. not, not, not actually a base, it's like a terrain. A terrain, yeah. yeah. A diorama terrain. And a terrarium in this context. Yeah, to, yeah that's, that's b b probably a better word. Yeah. And um, the idea is to to actually facilitate the process of creating a diorama, right? With mm -hmm. our with our uh, minis. So um, yeah, let's let's showcase that on the on the oh yeah the first habitat that first one is the assimil lizard ab habitat, right? Yes, that is the Sylvan habitat. Uh, the concept art done by Desu Junior and the sculpt done by Roberto Paula, and these two guys made all the other habitats. So that's going to be really really fun. Uh, so yeah, let's try to display it. I'll try... We have, we have video for it. Do we, we? do we have video for it? No. Oh, we don't? No? Okay. Okay. Uh, let's actually get this light a little bit up here. Um, I don't know if this is going to work exactly, but let's try it out. Yeah, it is really cool. It's really detailed. Some of the details here were actually added by Marcia, who painted them uh -huh. and made them really, really cool. And they are all thought to have like a, um, a center place for a mini that you want to present in I them. Think maybe the best way of doing it is like doing this. Yeah, that's good actually. Let's let's try to. Can, can you? I, can I hold it for you? Yep. Why? As you present it. Okay. Okay. Let's take the light here. Yeah. But yeah. It's really cool. Uh, it has a lot of depth uh, for your minis, and it has like uh, all of them. You're gonna see. Uh, have this kind of center display. I'm not going to take this out because it has the, the little blue. I don't think all of them has that. Have that. Does they, it? They do. They do have a place um, kind of in the center where you can place the mini. Okay. But yeah, this is really really fun. Uh, let's actually look at the riverbed habitat. For a the bundle. Bit. The bundle video uh, has uh, some some more detailed shots of these if you want to check it out. Yeah, and this one is really cool. Uh, we actually added some resin. Lucas added some uh, resin to it, yeah. so to that, make the river. Yeah, yeah, to make the river, and it looks amazing with the little pebbles uh, of the diorama. Uh huh. And it's our kappa diorama. It's really, really cool. You can actually probably run some comments on this one as well. Like you wouldn't have a grid. Run some what? Run some combat encounters. Oh sure, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't have a grid, but like. You can definitely make this work. Um, and then we have, oh my goodness, we have the uh, Arctic habitat. This one we can't actually. Uh, yeah, we can't um, tilt. Tilt too much because the snow is gonna get everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> like we, we already have some, some little bits of grass in this mm -hmm. one. But yeah, it's really cool. It's the Hagafelt one. Yeah. Or the, the What's the name? Borilla. The Borilla. <laughs> yeah, and it's really cool. There you yeah. go. Masia, again, guys, Masia was the one who, who put these together and she did an amazing job as always. Can't you some yeah, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah, a little, little bit. Yeah. Conservatory. Those make up for great display pieces, guys. They really do. Yeah. Um, and then finally, and we have four of these, you guys. It's incredible we have the volcanic um the volcanic habitat for the cerberus pollen which is awesome i love the paint job that marcia did for this one it's yeah. really cool kind of jagged rocks shooting shooting out and framing it i it's think really that this nice. is my favorite habitat i love the rocks from yeah i i, I it, it fights with the riverbed one for me I yeah, love the epoxy one is really cool. Epoxy makes everything cool. It really does. Turn, turn around. I think it's nine pieces for. Oh, oh, okay. So, let me hold this. Uh, it. Uh, we actually printed in. Yeah. Possibly. Six, six, 
Yeah. Eight. One, two, three, four, so five, eight. six, seven, eight pieces. So it's eight pieces that we uh, that were yeah. glued together. I think this was in a, a smaller print, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can print this these on uh, smaller uh, resin uh, printers, which is really great. So yeah, we try to actually um, make as many uh, things that we can uh, be printable and easily printable in. Um, most printers, so uh, so that you guys don't uh, don't have trouble kind of uh, printing anything that you you want from loot. And finally, our our big prop for this bundle, which is really really cool. It is. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna start start off with this small one. Yeah, let's start off with a small one. Let's show the concept first. Uh, the concept for the dragon head trophy, you guys, which is really amazing was done by Pedro Dutra, and it was sculpted by Jean Vitor. Um, and let's take a closer look. This is a smaller version that you can use, which is really fun, really incredible. Yeah. Maybe you can adapt it as like a, a, a knob, like for, for, for drawers or stuff like that. Yeah, it might, it might be a little bit too, uh, too sharp for that, but yeah. I don't care, just look. <laughs> It's gonna it's gonna be the the, the best uh, uh, the best drawer you know. ever so. exactly uh, and then and I don't think we're gonna be able to show this in the overhead camera but I'm gonna try uh, you can see this better in the, the bundle video I probably I mean guys <laughs> it's incredible I'm sure somebody's gonna even uh, make it a little bit bigger to we actually... We are doing it, actually. We're doing that. We're doing like a... a, a yeah. 200%, uh, Lucas? It's... Uh, we are going to do it. Yeah, we're going to do a 200% version of it. Yeah. So, so that's you gonna can, be... You can wait content of that, like... Or more. Yeah, 200 or more. Yeah. Yeah. You can you can uh, uh, you can uh, keep an eye out for content about that soon. It's gonna be proto dragon size, guys. It's gonna be worthy of the dragon for this bundle, and it is absolutely incredible. This yeah. is kind of the last piece of the menagerie. We we also have like a, an FDM version for this one, right? Yeah, we have. Yeah, oh, we, really cool. But we have uh, like available for for. Yeah, it's available. Yeah. It's available for you guys as well, uh, the FDM version for that. So that FDM is probably going to be in, inf infinitely easier to print this one if you want it like this size. Um, so it's check cheaper, it out. easier, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Probably going to take a lot less time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about easier, but cheaper, that's for sure. Yes. Yeah. It is incredible. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's it. I mean, if you're going to call it it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay, so that's it. Again, this one was done by Pedro Dutre as the concept artist and was sculpted by João Vitor. Luca, you want to put it on the wall? What? Oh, on the wall? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we actually have a place for it. I mean, it's not going to show in the camera, is it? Well, I, I, I oh, you can tilt it a little bit. Yeah. Let's try this out. Okay. Um, hold up. I'm gonna kill you for drilling into my wall, Lucas. <laughs> it, it's worth it, though. Look at this. <laughs> like, yeah, guys. Oh my it's, god. It's perfectly kind of with the light as well. So yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. So yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the the, uh, the amount of stuff that we have in this bundle. It's amazing. So yeah, it's, it looks just great. It yeah. looks incredible. Uh, should we let's let's talk a little bit about the video announcements again? So yeah, sure. Let's that bring that up. Uh, let's bring that up again. Yeah. So we have uh, the tortoise, the the gigantic tortoise from December. Yeah. A uh, video coming up. It's awesome. Looks awesome. Um, we also gonna we're also gonna have an FDM versus resin printer printing uh, video coming up this month. Yep. Um. I'm I'm pretty sure people people are gonna ask about the welcome pack. So mm -hmm. um, the welcome pack, uh, we had a little bump um, in the in in our way, but it's for the it's for the best because now uh, we're we're um, uh, solving some of the issues that um, for sure were gonna come up yeah. when we when we released it if we hadn't started to work on those exactly right now. So uh, basically. Uh, 
you're, you're gonna have more at the end of, of the uh, at the end of the day yes but it's gonna take us a little bit longer in order to deliver that yeah and soon we're gonna we're gonna say exactly what comes out in this welcome bundle so so the, the welcome back um, uh, bundle and it's it's guys it's really really cool I just want to I just yeah. want to uh, I reiterate that we're taking longer because we're delivering more stuff yes we're yeah that's that's what I can say right now exactly um, that's really cool so um, I think the last thing we have to say here and you want to do the honors uh, before we do a Q&A because we're gonna we're gonna get to that you guys uh, but we have the name for the next uh, fantasy bundle oh may I you may absolutely I may. Okay, so uh, the name of the next bundle is one that I'm very excited about. And uh, it's of course that we always say that yeah. because we're always excited about the, the stuff that we're releasing. But this time is I'm extra excited. It's about. something you guys have been asking for a long time. Yeah. Um, that I'm not going to say anything else. Yes. Just the name. But I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we're going to elicit a reaction. Um, so the na next bundle's name is Tales of Ryu Boken. So take of that what you will. So again, it is Tales of, of Rio Boken. Yes, so Tales yeah. of Rio Boken. Okay, so uh, we're we're open for questions, guys. If you wanna uh, ask us anything, uh, we are open for that right now. So let's take a look at chat. I'll, I'll, I'll try to find some older uh, questions because we didn't have a lot of time. Uh, so Tetsuo Antonio Mochizuki Asensio asks, can we have concepts of the welcome pack? Um, I think that Laura is the best one to answer that. Yeah. Uh, so Laura, if you're on chat, uh, please uh, help us out here. Yeah, I don't know if you have concepts from the... I, I mean, we do have concepts for the, the, the newest... Um, uh, edition of the welcome pack they might be released as soon as we um, actually talk about what's coming out mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's coming up guys so yeah. in a bit yeah so yeah uh, if, if we're able to share something um, loud is gonna is gonna be doing that but I'm, yeah. I'm not sure so I can't I can't promise anything exactly guys. state secrets guys yeah. um, okay what else? Let's see here. I think people are pretty excited <laughs> about Japan. So, <laughs> Dark Autumn Scribe said, uh, Karma Chameleon, yes, I'm a kid from the 80s. I laughed out loud. So, <laughs> you read somebody's heart. Yeah, I guess I reached <laughs> someone. Thank you. Thank you for not leaving me like laughing alone. Thank you. <laughs> okay. How many pieces total for the terrain diorama? Terrain diorama? One of those we counted was eight pieces, yeah, right? Yeah, eight pieces. I think that is that is there a difference between them? Um, I'm not sure. Let's don't do that one because that one has the grass. One, two, oh. three, four, five, six. For example, this one has six pieces. Same for this. No, this one has seven. This one has seven. So so it so, comes yeah. and goes, but uh, from between uh, between five to eight or yeah. something. Some of them but have simpler pieces, so they might be kind of uh, easier to print in small uh, printers. So yeah, but they're but they're, but they're all printable in small yeah. printers. Yes, yeah. great. Okay. Um. Um, anything big planned for the final legendary of, band, of bundle, legendary of dragons bundle in June? Uh, yes. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, if we talk about it now, we spoil the surprise. We spoil the surprise. But the answer is a most definitely yes. Yes. Um, something that we can we we can talk about actually is that we are kind of trying to make uh, the loyalty rewards a little bit more uh, thematically related to the bundles we're releasing. Mm -hmm. So the season and the bundle, right? Yeah, for the season. So not only can you expect something really, really cool for June in the bundle, the loyalty rewards, you guys, is gonna be amazing. So yeah, that's that's coming up as well. Yeah. Um <laughs> somebody is asking, uh, okay, be honest, is Tiago locked in the closet somewhere? He is <laughs> not locked anywhere. He's enjoying vacation, you guys. Yeah. He, yeah, he, if he... Um, he's quite possibly silently watching this. Possibly. If Tiago is in chat... Like, no, he's <laughs> not. I haven't seen him. Yes. Uh, but I think he's like, he's like ninja watching us right exactly. now. Exactly. If you are in chat, Tiago, <laughs> leave us a message. Um, okay. 
Will there will there be more trophies of epic creatures? Why not? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, we felt that we had a really good chance with the proto dragon for yeah. this this bundle. So we, we, I mean, we had to have a dragon head in this yes. season. So um, possibly for for. It had, for it to make sense, it has to be a really like iconic creature. Mm -hmm. But we deal in iconic creatures, so yeah, yeah, I can see why not. Maybe, yeah. I don't think we have anything planned out for the foreseeable future. But if you guys like this one, and you print it a lot. I mean, I don't see why not. Any hints for next season's theme? Are we are we going there? So the next season theme is. No, no, <laughs> not at all. Absolutely not, you guys. You know us. We like our spoilers. We're, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But can you give a keyword, maybe? A keyword. Um, season. <laughs> That's I don't know. horrible. That's man. horrible, but no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil anything. It, it is planned already, but yeah, it's going to be fun. Second season. Second season. That's a the good keyword. The keyword is second. Second season. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, um. Oh, okay. So, um, um, Aurelian Born is asking: In the style of the diorama, have you thought of making uh, pieces to represent a map with cities, landscapes, and fortresses? Uh, not exactly. Not like an overtop map, but we do. Uh, we we do have our eyes set on more uh, things that make your uh, either diorama or printy or gaming uh, scenarios uh, and, and kind of terrain easier. So that m might be coming up in a, f um, I don't know when exactly, but soon. Yeah. yeah. We, we are focusing, uh, actually, uh, apart from this, these, these dioramas because they're not really thought of as gaming pieces, mm -hmm. but apart from those, we have been kind of trying to really focus on the gameplay aspect of whatever terrain we come up with, right? Exactly. So, so I think that, yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of uh, trying to, to have more like fully playable stuff yeah. uh, coming out. Exactly. Like, and if you guys do like the dioramas, tell us, uh, please be very vocal and we might have more for you guys. So. Yeah, uh, Justin Delise has a great question. When it comes to new bundles, uh, how much does loot balance out the addition of classic D&D monsters versus new concept creations? I think that that's a very interesting question mm -hmm. because uh, we are an art company yeah. and we have artists that work with us and artists have this, have this tendency and need to express themselves. And I think that that's very healthy, that's very important and that uh, makes for uh, um, an arrangement that does not really allow for for full commitment to other people's creations. Exactly. Right? And I so, mean, we have already released so much of classic uh -huh. um, uh, uh, known um, RPG uh, creatures and classes over time mm -hmm. that we have reached a point that we're kind of able to uh, create new things and experiment mm -hmm. and kind of go into real uh, loot stuff. And know? imprint more of our creative vision into the stuff that we, we bring about, right? Exactly. But yeah, but we, on the other side of that coin, uh, we always try to make uh, the stuff that we do functional for the people that, uh, that subscribe to us, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, it has to be a creature that makes sense for your gameplay. It has to be a monster that makes uh, sense for the painters and stuff. So, exactly. so we try to balance it out, uh, trying to, to cater to to um, the needs of of every every type of, of uh, subscriber that we have. Mm -hmm. So basically, guys, we always try to take care of you. So that's that's the the, the best answer I can give. That's the best answer yeah. possible. Yes, absolutely. Um, so Rex, to this, any more vehicles coming up? Um, I don't think so. Not for the the next months but um possibly in the future but not not quite not for fantasy especially mm -hmm. um yeah um will there be more monsters and heroes based on brazilian myths yes yes absolutely yes <laughs> I, I i actually um um was the one that in the definition of the bundle proposed the mapinguari and i'm gonna fight for them guys i love them like Brazilian folklore is absolutely so rich 
and I, I love that we already have um, three creatures from it, and uh, I hope we have more. So yeah. Um, Daniel asks, any plans for some class-specific trinkets and coins or something that can be used to track initiative and things like that? Asked above, but it seems it was missed. Um, so, uh, do we have any? It, has that been discussed in, in product creation at all? Mm, what's the question again? Just, just uh, a... Trinkets, coins, etc. to track initiative, track HP, trackers in general. Trackers right? in general. We do have... Um, um, we, we have been looking at more uh, gameplay based props that can actually uh, go into your table and be more um, present um, instead of, of uh, mostly showcase pieces. Uh, but we do love making artistic pieces, but we do have some coming up that are going to be more mm -hmm. uh, geared towards gaming. Great. Um, Mohammed Riza asks, just a question. Will there be a dragon from Fisben, Treasury of Dragons, or will all dragons be original loot dragons? I think Mind Flayer Dragon would suit this theme tremendously. So, um, uh, since the beginning of, of the Legendarium of Dragons, uh, we had in mind the idea of, of going full, like, loot original dragons, right? Mm -hmm. So, you're going to notice that we haven't really... Uh, um, we haven't really done any of the classical D, &D dragons we haven't done like the red dragon with the with the the crest normal kind of. characteristics yeah. like with the, the blue dragon with the horn the green dragon with the with the uh, uh with the fins the fins yeah the white dragon but anyways we haven't done any of that because we've we've gone like full loot original mm -hmm. and that uh won't change until the end of this season but that doesn't mean like in the future we won't do um classical dragons at all exactly. but of course that we're gonna take a take, take a break from dragons after yeah. after I mean, uh, this is the season of dragons after yes. all we have to deliver um on on kind of the promise of creativity like even in the even the proto dragon as a good example mm -hmm. it is uh, our wyvern but we had to g give it a loot spin to it so yeah uh, it turned out really really great but like like mateo said uh we might in the future mm -hmm. um um, anything else, guys? Um, okay. Um, Welcome back 3.0. We, we already talked about that, David P. If you, if you go back a little bit, um, you'll be able to, to get some news on it. Mm. Yeah, puzzles or riddles to print. That's actually really interesting. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. Like, um, we try to create more um, um, modular gameplay terrain, but I don't, I don't see why we couldn't do that. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 Thanks for the idea. <laughs> Any kind of Aarakocra minis in the works? Um, have we done Aarakocra before? I believe I think we have. so. I yeah. think we do have Aarakocra in our, in our um, portfolio. But I'm not sure if we if we have anything on the works in that uh, in that direction. Yeah, yeah. If if um, if any if any uh, loot people in chat can track what bundle we have our Kokra, which is those uh, bird people, um, maybe let us know in, in chat. Exactly. Uh, uh, Rexodus is also commenting, voicing my desire for swappable parts. So yeah. I agree with the rest of Rexodus. I think that that's a great idea yeah. that we are yet to try. Swappable, swappable parts are really fun. Uh, they can be a little bit finicky though uh, with the miniatures. Yeah. So unless we have a bundle that really speaks to swappable parts and, and has uh, characters with, uh, well, not only swappable heads, for example, but swappable bodies mm -hmm. uh, that have similar armor and things like that, uh, we try to include them. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a difficult thing to pull off in every bundle. Maybe like um, a swappable like a uh, hand with a weapon already goes a long way, right? Maybe yeah. like the, uh, having an option for the barbarian, for example, to mm -hmm. have an axe, a sword, or a, yeah. Like so, some some characters have uh, poses that work for that. Uh huh. But um, if we do uh, swappables, everything. We kind of sacrifice a lot of the dynamic poses that we try to come up with as characters, and it kind of leaves us 
a tiny bit um, locked into the swappable aspect of the miniature. Uh -huh. So it, it really does go from bundle to bundle. Yeah, I get what you're saying, yeah. But mm -hmm. it would be a nice, uh, an interesting uh, attempt. Absolutely. An, inter an, an interesting test, I guess. Yeah. True, true, true. Your dioramas are absolutely wonderful. Please give us many more dragon dioramas. I love your models, and the only way to make them even better for me is to create dioramas. Thank you so much. I thought it was a question, but it wasn't. But thank you, but so wholesome. Ronin Jr. Yeah, yeah. thanks. That's um, lovely to hear. Thanks a lot. Guys, Dennis have had some questions. Do you have any recommendations on seamless connection pieces? We have. Uh, what's What's the question? Where Where is it? Uh, it's. Uh, Oh, hat. like connection pieces as in different uh, parts there? Seamless, uh, we, we need to do some finishing process. Yes. And we use a baby folder with resin, UV mm -hmm. resin, to oh, fill okay. these, these gaps and have these perfect finishing yeah, Bars. so if, if you haven't heard it, I don't know if, if the audio was catching, uh, Luca, who is, Lucas, who is our, our uh, uh, 3D printing specialist, um, actually uh, commented. Was it, yeah, he was yeah. answering a question by Dennis Hack. Dennis Hack. About uh, uh, connect. I'm going to repeat the question. I think it's easier. Yeah. Um, do you have recommendations on seamlessly connecting pieces? Actually, on the fortress, the tortoise yeah. that has a fort in its back uh, video, there will be um, there a few there, tips. Yeah, there's a few tip, tips about that. There are few tips about that in that video, but basically what you can do uh, in order to make it, uh, summarizing it, you can um, uh, mix, uh, mix in some baby powder in uh, some resin in order to make it thicker, more viscous, mm -hmm. and then work it on the seams and then curing it with the UV light because uh, making it more viscous make it more makes it more workable. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's basically what what um, what Lucas does when he needs to to assemble those big stuff, big big with things, and and has to to make it seamless, right? So, yes. And yeah. We have a video about this about this on YouTube. There we go. We have a video about it. It's the whole finishing process. Yeah, guys, check it out. This is an amazing video. Uh, it's the full finishing process for your minis. This uh, tip is included there. It's a lot of information. I think you guys are going to Yeah, maybe uh, if, if José Neto or Boza or, or, um, or Laura can, can um, uh, post a link for that video uh, in the comments. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have some people actually creating the Fortis, uh, the, the, the Fortis Tortoise at... Uh, 125 percent so that's really really nice yeah the ones that the one that we are are, are, are about to release a video on is to the 200 percent uh, uh, scaled one which is yeah. which is true to scale for 32 millimeter uh, uh, characters mm -hmm. and it's just absolutely massive it's oh. it's <laughs> it's great we have a question that Lotto may be able to answer uh, better than than us um, what bundle is going on sale in April so, Good question. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, it might know. Actually, I know which one. Probably. You do? Yeah. Okay. So which one is it? Um, um, Mad Mage's experiment. That's kind of its cousin bundle, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just look for a chat. Laura will be able to confirm that for us. But I'm pretty sure uh, we're going back to one of the first bundles from Loot, uh, which is really really fun always. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I think um, I think we're good, right? Yeah. So, guys, um, again, thank you for uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon for uh, for the uh, curious the collector the, no no the curse collector curse collector curiosities. curiosities. Sorry, exactly. the CCC gets me jumbled every time. Yes. Um, and uh, thank you for coming, guys. Thank you for being with us. Uh, if you have any questions, any more questions. Yeah. Um, uh, leave them in chat leave because them in chat uh, go to them. discord because we have a very active discord and people are always ans answering questions there exactly. and uh, don't forget to check uh, the new content that's coming up uh, the fortress uh, fortress back tortoise and um, and, uh, and the resin 3D FDM. printing um, resin versus FDM video mm -hmm. and uh, yeah that's it for today guys okay thank you guys and see you later bye 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 Ooh.